In this tutorial, we'll see how to use QGIS or QGIS, which is a free and open source geographic information system to create shape files and KML files. These file formats are useful for storing geographic information such as country, city, state coordinates in terms of their latitude, longitude information or demographic information pertaining to the country, state or city. This geographic information is very helpful for geospatial analysis. Shape files for countries, cities, etc. can be freely accessed from various websites. But in scenarios where we don't find these shape files, we can use QGIS to create the required shape files. So let's first see where to download the software from. All we need to do is go to Google, type QGIS, and there you have Welcome to the QGIS project. Click this link, and this is the website, a free and open source GIS. So, to download the software, go to download now, and uh, you have download for Windows. So, this is a, a very bigger version of the file it includes lots of features but for our tutorial we'll be using QGIS standalone installer windows 3.16 version and if you scroll below you have a 64 bit and a 32 bit version so based on your computer requirements you can go for either the 64 bit or the 32 bit version this software is also available for Mac OS as well as Linux. So Mac and Linux users can go to the respective download links. So once you've downloaded the QGIS file and you open it up, this is your QGIS software. And a quick intro into what is available here in the screen. At the top, you see there are various toolbars. Just scroll over a toolbar, it will tell you it is the digitizing toolbar and this tells you data source manager toolbar. So these are various toolbars and for our tutorial, we will only be needing this digitizing toolbar. So if this toolbar is not available, all you need to do is go to view and toolbars and just check the digitizing toolbar. So below the toolbars, you have various panels and this is called the browser panel. This actually helps you quickly browse through the files that are there in your system. And below that you have the layers panel. So again, if you don't have these panels or if you close any of these panels, all you need to do is go to view, panels and add layers panel. So you have your browser and the layers panel. So let's start a new project. Either click your new empty project or go to project at the top. Click new. And let's first see where do we get these shape files from. So let's go to Google. Let's type diva hyphen gis enter so this is a website that helps you get free shape files so let's click this link and go to free spatial data let's look at country level data and let's search for the country soda because we'll be using this for our tutorial and you have shape files for various uh, features such as roads, railroads, elevation, administrative areas. Let's stick with administrative areas. Click OK. So click download. A zip file will be downloaded. Let's put this zip file in a folder. We have a folder. Let's place our folder here. And now, as we already saw in the QGIS software, we had the option to browse for files. 
So let's go to our file. Was here in QGIS. We see in the QGIS folder that there are CSV as well as shape files, but we only need the shape files. So let's select all the available shape files, drag it and drop it. So you see that there are four shape files. These are laid one on top of the other with this file admin 0 being the topmost file. Below that you have administration 1, admin 2 and then 3. So if we uncheck these files, you see the different levels of administration. Maybe this would be at the state level, the district level, the city level and so on. So we see that this shape file actually represents Sudan. But Sudan now has North as well as South Sudan. South Sudan split from North Sudan in 2011. But the shape file that we got from the website has just the North Sudan shape file. We don't have the South Sudan shape file. So in this tutorial, we'll see what do we do in scenarios where we don't have shape files for any country and how do we create a shape file when a shape file doesn't exist, when you're not able to find the shape file for a particular country, state or a city. In such scenarios, you can use QGIS to create your own shape files. So that is what we are going to do in this tutorial. See how do we create a shape file for South Sudan, which doesn't have a shape file. But before we get into that, let's see what are the different features available in QGIS to study these shape files. So let's go to this shape file, right click and go to open attribute table. So this gives you a list of features, different attributes that are available for the shape file. You have name 0, ID, name 1, name 2, name 3. These are the different attributes that are there for the shape file. Name 3 could represent a city, town or village. Name 2 could represent the district. Name 1, this could represent the different states in Sudan. And then you have this country. So these are the different attributes. In addition to this, you can also have attributes such as the population for each uh, city, for each state. You could have the different demographic information. Those attributes can also be available for shape files. So if you select any of these rows, just select these rows. And when you minimize this, you see that those particular areas are highlighted here. And uh, you can also change the color of your shape files. You could right click, go to properties. Then you have symbology, color. You could change the color, something different, click apply and OK. This changes the color of your shape file. So there are these few aesthetic changes that you can make on your shape file. And earlier we saw the attributes, different attributes for each and every administrative region. Let's see how do we place those attributes on top of this map to do that you can go to properties right click properties go to labels and select single labels and so this is your text format font format you can change the style change the size let's leave those as they are and we need to select the label that we need to have on top of this map. We saw that there are different names, name of the country, state, district and city. Let's select name 3, click apply and click OK. So 
this actually places all the names of those administrative regions on top of this map. So now we have a very interesting feature, a very cool feature that uh, helps us overlay the shape file on top of the world map. So that can be done using a plugin. That plugin might not be available at first. So let's go and install the plugin. Let's go to plugins, manage and install plugins. So this is what we want. If it's not available, you can just type quick map services and install plugin. So this installs your plugin. Let's close this. Go to web. This is the plugin that we installed. Quick map services. Go to OSM. Select OSM standard. So what this does is it beautifully overlays the shapefile that you downloaded on top of the world map. And as I mentioned earlier, we see here that uh, South Sudan is not part of this shapefile. And we actually want the shapefile for South Sudan. So let's now move on to creating a shapefile for South Sudan. To do that, let's uh, let's we don't need this North Sudan shapefile anymore. Let's delete these shapefiles. Remove layer. Okay. So now we'll have to draw a line on this border and that will enable us to create a shape file for this country South Sudan. To do that, first let's create a new shape file. Let's go to layer, create layer, new shape file layer. Let's name it south sudan and we'll be using the geometry type polygon to create our shape file and as we saw earlier these shape files had various attributes earlier for north sudan we actually saw that a table had different attributes such as name location etc and here we might create our own attributes so we can have an attribute called name which is of type text and length 80. This will store all the names. For example, if we are creating shapefile for different administrative areas, this will have the name for different administrative areas. We already have a field called ID that will store all the ID values for different names. Let's add this to the field list. So you have two fields, two attributes. Let's click OK. And now let's create the shape file. Let's do that. You go to toggle editing. It's there in this toolbar called digitizing toolbar. Go to toggle editing, click on that. And this activates few tools. Let's go to add polygon, select this and now we'll have to create a polygon on top of this boundary. So let's start off from here, left click and just follow this boundary, left click and left click again to so left click this will just follow the boundary or now let's create an approximate boundary so once you get here right click and let's give this an id 1 and give the name so 
Sudan and click OK. So this is our South Sudan shapefile. Now that we have created a shapefile for South Sudan, let's export this shapefile. So we can export this either as shapefile or KML file or in any other format that we want. To export it, go to the layer South Sudan, go to export, say features as. So either save it as a shapefile, click shapefile, go to file format. and save it in the location that you want south sudan save okay or you can save it even as a kml file which is a very useful format when you use the file in google earth it's the same way just right click export save features as kml file select the location south sudan and save click ok so let's go and have a look at our KML file. So you have the KML file as well as other files. All these other files got created when you created your shape file. This is the shape file that we created and this is the KML file. So when you double click the KML file, it opens Google Earth. And this will overlay the shapefile that you created on South Sudan. See these red lines, this is the shapefile that we created. So if you click on this area, anywhere in this area, it will show the attribute South Sudan 1. So these are the attributes that you created. And these attributes are available. 